Welcome to episode 66 of the Chumpcast. The whole crew is back after Thanksgiving to discuss what gifts we could give the Punisher for Christmas. Obviously, this is a precursor to our review of the newest Netflix series, which dropped last week. If you haven't seen it yet, you're definitely missing out. We also discuss Black Mirror and the upcoming season, along with the newest trailers and teasers of the week. Make sure you check out thechumpcast.com for our t-shirts and other merch, and also my newest writing entry titled Hot and Streamy, where I'll be reviewing some of the lesser known entries on streaming services. If you want to support the show, tell a friend to subscribe and tune in. We really need to get our numbers up so we can launch our cult in which we worship the rock's lubricated muscles. You can also help out financially by shopping via our Amazon affiliate link, thechumpcast.com slash Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything, but it definitely helps us out. Without further ado, enjoy episode 66. You know what else is extremely overrated to eat? Caviar. Have you ever had that? Don't shit. have any urge. It's shit. No, it's eggs. It's eggs. There's shit in the eggs, though. But it's... That's why I don't like shrimp. Here you go. Shrimp has like that shit vein in it. I always pull that out. Gross. You got to butterfly it and then... What I'm are we talking about? Guy. I can't eat octopus or like... I actually like octopus. Ugh. I love octopus. I, maybe you just haven't had it cooked right. No, no, no. I just don't like the texture the or of the it. look of it or the... Do you like calamari? Do you no. need it fried? Nope. Nope. So good, man. Do you get I grossed know. out when you see the calamari with the, the legs. octopus legs? Yeah, I can't do it. Hmm. There's like a sushi place that has serves like their octopus like super fresh. And like when you put the vinegar on it, the legs still move and shit. Yeah. That is the biggest, grossest thing I've ever seen. Like I can't deal with that. Like, yo, that thing is still alive. It's moving around. I don't care if you cut its head off. That's gross. That all, is gross. All that grosses me out. I can't do anything. Ugh. Like little suction cups on there. Ugh. Cephalopods are crazy smart too. Like all the squids and octopus and yeah. cuttlefish. Ugh. They can squeeze through anything. That's disgusting. A hole the size of a penny. Have you ever seen that video where that guy had one on his boat and the octopus is just slithering? Yeah, dude. I don't even know what to call the movements they do, but it was Let's moving over to like this, the side and it's is this just a trigger for you. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm like that and moldy bread just like is the grossest shit to what me. If moldy you, bread. I what can't if, do moldy bread. <laughs> What if you were sleeping with your mouth open and an octopus just inked all over, all over you, right in your mouth? What would you do? I see. I, I first of all, that'd be well, why would I even have this situation come upon me ever? A live octopus, just well, like now, it's going to be a prank show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we know your weakness, but no, I feel like getting inked in the face would be something. It'd be like different than like having to actually eat it. Inking. Okay. What if it just crawled in your open mouth then? Then I'd like be like oh, and choke <laughs> it out and like spit it everywhere. Obviously. And then it like runs away, but it uses its uh, camouflage and you can't find it. It's like just on the wall and then it jumps out at you and just starts strangling you and bashing your head against the wall like the Punisher. If I was losing, if I was losing to a fight to an octopus, I would probably just kill myself anyway. You know, like a regular sized small octopus. They got beaks, man. They got what? Beaks. Like octopi? Is it octopi? Octopus? They don't have teeth. They have like a beak. Fucking weird. Really? Octopuses are weird. And gross. Is that like your fear? What? O- like an octopus? An octopus attack? No. Like how some people are afraid of spiders. Like, are you like, oh, octopus? No, it's like, Ugh. it's like a gross, like, Ugh. Mm. I don't think you've ever given it a chance, though. Have you ever met an octopus, like petted it or anything? It's a valid point. Think about all they've done for you. How many times have you written with an ink pen? Never. I'm a pencil guy only. Mm. Fact. Mm. Never used pen in my life. Good talk. <laughs> Yeah, I know. What if the Punisher was an octopus? Then he could shoot eight people at once. Or he can just beat the shit out of people with eight arms. Oh! Or he can eye gouge, <sighs> or he can eye gouge with his beak now. No, he can just eye gouge four people oh, at once. That was fucking brutal. <laughs> Which one? No spoilers, though. <laughs> yeah, no spoilers. So many eye gougings. <laughs> <laughs> Were you expecting that much gore? Yes. Yeah. Any Punisher. You read, okay, if you want gore in a comic book, go read Punisher Max. Even like the the Garth Ennis stuff, when he wrote that, is very reminiscent. So the scene where they're underground and they think that they're going to catch him off guard, except he murders all of them instead. Yeah. Classic. Very Garth Ennis. Okay. That could be a litany of scenes, but you guys know what I'm talking about. We'll talk about it in spoilers. But. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, let's get into the dumb question then. We struggle with this a little bit, coming up with one for this week, Punisher related. But since it is technically the Christmas season now, Woo. we want to know what you would get Frank Castle, the Punisher, as a Christmas gift. So think Ooh. about all the dirty, vicious things or stupid 
things that he said or screamed <laughs> and come up with the best possible gift for Frank Castle. Mine would be a couple different things. See a little little mix mac, mix and match bag for him. First of all, it would be a freaking stress ball because my man has some pent up aggression. He just needs to like just stress it out. Just bang that ball as hard as he can, just squeezing it. Um, but also on the side of the hands, we'll go with fingerless gloves just so we can really feel the eyeballs that he's gouging, you know, get that real feel. He doesn't wear gloves, though. Fingerless gloves. I'm going to give him fingerless gloves. Yeah. What if he has to eye gouge somebody in December? Okay. Got to keep them hands warm. I was thinking gloves, but him just always bashing someone's face in. If you give him gloves with maybe bare knuckles in them, he wouldn't have as many issues as he does because he's always getting in fights and it's just an all out fist fight. And then he gets the shit beat out of him, and then he's beating the shit out of someone else. If he had bare knuckles, or bra- not bare knuckles, if he had brass knuckles. That makes a little more sense. Did I say bare knuckles yes, in the beginning? If he had brass knuckles and then potentially gloves with it, I would say, though, he needs full-on bo- body armor. The amount of damage that his body is taking throughout the show is ridiculous. I, really, I don't know how he's alive. Like that, though. Except now he is technically War Machine in the comics. Let's not talk about that. I think he feeds off the pain, though. He I don't think a stress adrenaline. ball is enough to relieve the memory of his family getting murdered. That's why I gave him the gloves, too. Just so when he does do the killing, he get the, gets the real feel. See, I think he needs to move on. So if I was going to give him a present, I think it would be like a one-year subscription to Match.com. He needs to find someone that shares his interests in murder and Are you going to set up his profile? Are you set up a profile with him, or is he He's good looking dude. to him? He's a good-looking dude. He can fucking... Yeah. I, like I'll set him up on blind he's not very, He's not very talkative. What do you put in his profile? Likes to murder people. Hey, do you have eyeballs that I can gouge in your skull? Have you been on the internet? There's some weird people out there. What's his redeeming quality? He's handsome. That's, he can play the guitar. Okay, plays guitar. Is somewhat handsome. Good also, with kids. Great with kids. <laughs> great with kids. Hey, teaching your wife lessons with knives and stuff. What about, what about his relationship with Karen Page? You're just going to overlook that? Yeah, you don't think because they Karen together? Page gets with, is supposed to be with Daredevil. You think that's, so? That's how, it's, that's how it works. Mm. And Frank Castle will never get over his dead wife. He could never fucking do that. Unless but, you go to Match.com. Exactly. Because, you know, they, they use all those different metrics to find you your perfect match. Or maybe, I think better than a stress ball would be like a fleshlight. Just really work <laughs> out that, that anger. Okay. Who, who would pick him up? Who would be his, his match? Who would match with him on Match.com? Someone who's really into true crime and shit like that. Ooh. Maybe maybe she's got a dark side. Who would be... Maybe she's a dominatrix of some sort. Who would be like a military woman that would be into it? Like from a movie. Laura Croft? Laura Croft and the Punisher. Who wins that fist fight? The Punisher. Punisher. With brass knuckles. What else could we get Frank Castle for Christmas? Um, Some hot tea. Some bags of tea for his fucking voice. Because he's always... <laughs> oh, Tea and honey? It's really rough in that esophagus. Oh. Yeah, I can't even do it. So. I maintain that he had the second deepest voice on that show because Madani's mom, when she talks, she talks like this. It was unnerving to, to watch that sound come out of her mouth. She is like she was like the exorcist devil reincarnated into her body. She's deep. in a ton of stuff too. Like really? she, yeah, she was in one of the X-Men movies and I don't know like what happened to her voice. Does she just smoke three packs of cigarettes a day? Yeah. That was me trying to do an impression of her. Didn't work. Didn't land. <laughs> what would you or, give him? Did you say anything yet? He said match. match dot com. Com. Oh. Maybe some fuzzy dice to hang from the rearview mirror of his van. Maybe we could pay somebody to do some sweet airbrushing on the side of his van. He loves that fucking van. Of his dead wife and children on the side. Who so why do, why does he choose to? Why does he wear that vest only sometimes? I don't fucking know. It's bulletproof, isn't it? He wears other bulletproof vests too. It was just weird because throughout the show, he decided to wear it at like random times. But you got to have that moment you know? where he, you see him painting the skull on his body. Oh, no, I, I get it. But you I know, thought either that would be like an intro scene or an outro scene, like the, one of the last scenes in the show, maybe where he decides like to bring the Punisher back to life, something like that. Maybe we get him a stencil so we can put that on all make his clothes. Make a little, little cleaner lines. Maybe yeah. we just make him a sticker, you know? But then you don't, if have he has a, don't have to get your hands dirty. But if he has a stencil, then you can just... Cut and paste, basically, with, with paint. Make a bunch of different make chest a bunch plates. Of, yeah, he can make a bunch of different chest plates for all his clothes. <clears throat> then he could not. be like a Superman with Punisher on all of his clothes. Maybe we could get him a color paint that's different than white. If you paint it red, you don't have to worry about cleaning the blood stains off. 
that's just actually economical. You don't get new shirts. Well, black does the same thing. Yeah, but you can't do black on black. You wouldn't be able to see the skull. You're going to want to keep those blood stains on there. Jim. It's kind of weird that the, the most obvious like bullets and shit, we don't we didn't even go there. Yeah, well, he's got enough of that. I just mm. get him some Tylenol. Be like, man, you got you to gotta calm it down a little bit. Xanax. <laughs> yeah, some Xanax. Get him some bars. Yo, chill out, man. Some morphine. Yo, here's what you can do. Like a hobby, maybe. We can get him a hobby. <laughs> That's better <laughs> than murdering people, you know? What do you hey, get him some arts and crafts. Clubs? Yeah. Yeah, right. He shanks one into the fucking other fairway, and he, all of a sudden he's murdering someone on a course. No, you actually, here's, we, we do. We get him into arts and crafts. Punisher logos on everything. Stencil it in. Have him paint. I think, then if, I think he okay, needs so I Get him on Bob if, Ross. I assume that if we're giving him Christmas presents, he's going to give us Christmas presents. I don't need anything else with a skull on it. He's going to paint me a picture and it's going to have a giant fucking skull and a bunch of dead bodies on it. No thanks. This was made with real human blood. It was like, that's his like, go-to. Funny that you say that. That was actually a recent Daredevil story. What do you mean? Uh, a guy was murdering people and painting beautiful paintings with their blood. And Daredevil could tell because Merry he Christmas. has a super keen sense of smell. And he's like, ooh, that's blood, not paint. Ugh. Pretty gruesome. Cool. A little macabre, if you will. What else does Frank Castle even do? See, we need to get him a hobby. What, what can Frank Castle's hobby be? Well, his hobby was knocking down walls with sledgehammers. So we could get him a new sledgehammer. Didn't he, he like did that from morning till night. And this is another instance when your gloves would come in handy because yeah. his hands wouldn't get all raw. No blisters. I feel like he would really get into wine. Right. Kind of sewer. Get him, a, get him a subscription to a Wine of the Month club. Maybe some cheese to go along with it. Wine of the Month at Cooper's Hawk. Get Will Ilpo to hook him up. <laughs> he never he never really had the chance to really appreciate wine. Because remember that line he he mentioned when he was talking to Micro's wife? Boone's, Boone's Farm. Farm. Yeah. yeah. So. Boone's Farm and Mad Dog. The MD 2020. Oh, yeah. God, that shit is so terrible. But you definitely have to get him the ho- a hobby. Because wasn't that the most disturbing ending to a season? That last line that he mentioned when he's like, I'm, I'm just scared. Basically because he doesn't have any more people to kill yeah, or want to kill. Yeah, didn't expect to live that long. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oof. I mean, we could just give him a paintball gun and say, you can shoot people this way, and they still live. <laughs> just fighting. <laughs> you can, you still can imagine being in like a paintball course, and you just hear... <laughs> he would, at you he would still figure out a way to kill you. He'd like just shoot you in the face while you're on the ground until you're like... <laughs> He'd be the only dude that shows up with a paintball gun and a giant knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like when I'm close that's not range. how paintball works, Frank. <laughs> But there's pain on the knife, <laughs> so it counts. All right, let's get to the best man alive of the week. Brick, you got something for me? Um, surprisingly, this was just after I found out that Auburn beat Alabama. Just really screw things up for the college football. But I'm actually going to give it to Alabama for best team alive because I just found out that Alabama ended with three active players on their basketball team against the Golden Gophers, Minnesota. So they had 11 minutes to go in the second half, and they outscored Minnesota Golden Gophers, who's ranked like 14. And they had three players active. Seven of their players got kicked out from a scuffle on the court. Seriously? So they had five people left. They played th- three on five or only three? They played three on five. What? So they had <clears throat> seven people got ejected from the game. One person fouled out. Another person, freshman, hurt their ankle, so they were down to three active players. So they played three on five for the last... 11 minutes of the game, and outscored a ranked college basketball team. That's fucking embarrassing. Also, that tells you everything you know about the early college basketball rankings. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, that's just insane, though. So, roll tied for holding it down 3 versus 5 against a ranked opponent. That's amazing. All right, since we're talking basketball, I, I got I to gotta mention this story. One of my worst men alive, I, it's been a down week for this, but one of mine is basically any Trump supporter on Twitter and we don't like to get political here, so we're not going to get political. We stay in our lanes, but usually. a lot of these Trump supporters on Twitter are yelling at LeVar Burton because they think that he's LeVar Ball. <laughs> but LeVar Burton is actually from Star Trek and reading Rainbow. Amazing. So there's just these idiots yelling on Twitter about, you're so ungrateful, President Trump got your son out of jail. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Man, I'm on TV. That's just hilarious. Amazing. What a bunch of idiots. And it's very fitting that they don't know who LeVar Burton is because obviously they never saw Reading Rainbow and don't know how to read. How do you fuck that so up? Like, like, how are they I fucking it up? It's are they not the full name? How do you mix those two up? They're not even remotely close. Are they tweeting him? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, they're tweeting at LeVar Burton. Must be something with the handle. Is it something with yeah, his Twitter No, name? his handle is LeVar Burton. 
Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiots. They're probably actually just going LeVar, peace. Assuming it's the next one. <laughs> they just type in <laughs> LeVar B, and that's the first one that comes up, I guess. That's got to be him. There's not that many LeVars in the world, right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Mark, you got one for me? Yeah, I do. With it being a few days after Black Friday, actually one day, right now we're recording on Saturday, but there was a man from New Jersey, they're identifying him as Charlie K, but he had a, a news story on CBS, so... According to this news story, he wound up paying for about 60 orders totaling over $10,000 for toys at Toys R Us. These are all layaway orders. Toys R Us was allowing customers to make smaller payments for these Black Friday discounts. So they were making smaller payments. And what he did is he came in assuming that they were struggling to pay these off. And he ended up paying over $10,000 worth of layaway orders. So Those are always good stories. So reading... Further into the article, I guess he gave an additional $2,000 worth of toys for Toys for Tots, which is a charity run by the U.S. Marine Corps that brings Christmas gifts to children whose parents can't afford them. So props to this guy. He's getting in the spirit of ready. We're not even in December yet. But Look at you reading uplifting news stories and I'm sitting here bashing people for being idiots on Twitter. I figured that'd be a good way to end it. So Yeah, you do a lot of worse person alive segments. I got another one too. They're easy is this come, a ba- easy another go, worst know? person alive or Let's best person alive? Worst asshole. person alive, the chairman of, of the FCC who's trying to abolish net neutrality right now. Um, I know that people see this and they think, oh, the nerds will handle it or like this won't affect me. But this literally affects everyone. A G5 everybody. is essentially just selling out to Comcast and all these other companies, Time Warner, etc. Write or call your congressperson because this is horseshit and it will fuck a lot of people. Can you go further into what's happening with this? Uh, it protects the fact that even a small website gets the same speed from your from your internet provider. So you can go and visit thechumpcast.com, which is a small website, with the same speed with which you could visit Amazon, which is one of the most highly trafficked websites in the world. Mm-hmm. Eliminating net neutrality would basically say Amazon can get high speed, like they will pay an ISP or you will pay your ISP to be able to visit them at the utmost speed, at the highest speed available. Smaller companies, startups, etc. obviously can't do that. They can't compete with Amazon. So this is essentially monopolizing the yeah, internet for higher, I guess, larger companies, larger established companies. Does that make sense? Are they going through with this or is this in talks? It's going to vote, I believe, the first week and I believe next week. Do you think that this actually happens? Let's say our website compared to Amazon, it will be noticeably slower. I think that it would take a while to get to that point, but... If you know anything about internet service providers, you know that they take full advantage of everything. They'll throttle back yeah. your internet, even though it doesn't cost them anything to give you more bandwidth. Yep. It's just a, a money grab. And it's dirty and gross. And they've tried to do they've been trying to do this for about five years now. It's horseshit. But fuck you with G Pie. Peace. You like Comcast though, still, right? Love them. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any actually internet provider is always the best. They're the fan no, they're favorites. Terrible. What about yeah, Mediacom? Obviously. Mediacom. Jesus. <laughs> Have they gone out of business yet? I don't know. They can't. They, monop- they monopolize that area. You can't there's still get, a like, family the video there's no there. No competition anywhere. There, Charleston still has a family video. I doubt Mediacom went out of business. I was in Bourbon A last night. They still have a family video. Really? Yeah. I mean, your town has like 200 people, so I believe it. Um, thousand, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> News, shall we? Thanks for the segue, Brick. No problem, dog. I'm a little off my game today. You're there. Jude Law has been cast to star opposite Brie Larson in the upcoming Captain Marvel movie. Oh, what a bitch. I like Jude Law. Jude Law is getting some really high profile He's roles. He's a good actor. He's going to play Dumbledore. Dude, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. He, I, I really liked him in uh, Road to Perdition, low key. He's, wow, that's a deep cut. That's I a deep cut. I would cut. not have expected you to say that right there. Love that movie. But okay. Yeah. He was a really good villain in that one. He's a great actor. He really so is. I, I don't know, but he's going to play the original Captain Marvel. So it used to be. Captain Marvel, the female version, was Miss Marvel, which now has been passed on to someone else. But Brie Larson's going to take over as Captain Marvel, be the actual female version. She is trained by Marvel, who is going to be Jude Law. Great. I'm, I'm good on that. I, I like that addition there. Jude Law's the man. Mark, can you clarify to me, has Joss Whedon been fired from Batgirl or not? Because I there were reports know. that he was, and then reports that he wasn't. And now there are reports that he is, again, fired from writing and directing Batgirl. I have no idea. Were they planning on doing that before the Batman movie? I don't think it had a release date yet. Neither did the Batman movie. So, But this whole Justice League thing has been such a clusterfuck. They're going to end up losing probably about $100 million on this movie. And that kind of puts everything else in jeopardy. 
the only sure things that were guaranteed right now are Wonder Woman 2, Aquaman. Aquaman's pretty much done. Really? Wait, they're going to lose $100 million? That's what the, that's what the really? early projections are. I thought they just announced it was the highest grossing movie in America in the last month or so. Definitely not. No? I'm pretty sure that it's actually going to lose this box office weekend to What'd Coco. What they spend on it? It's got a $300 million budget plus whatever they spend on marketing. Usually you like double that okay. um, plus the reshoots and all that. You know, all I can go off of, obviously, I can't see their books. All I can go off of is the reports that I can read. Uh, so I don't know the What are they reporting? It. The loss is going to be about $100 million there's Obviously, like, that depends. Okay. They were hoping that the word of mouth, the positive word of mouth, would get more people to go see this. But a $96 million opening on a movie of that size is piss poor. Yeah. Got beat by Thor. Lower than Wonder Woman. Lower than BVS. Lower than pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. But. Kind of a clusterfuck. So I don't know what they're going to do with the rest of these movies. There have been a lot of fake news articles out there about, you know, the, the whole universe has been put on hold. But obviously, they can't do that. They already got the ball rolling on some of these. So the next one they're going to be doing is Shazam. Aquaman comes out in December. Oh, really? Then probably Wonder Woman. Then I think Shazam's not until like 2020. It's going to be that long before. Well, they just enough. cast everybody. They haven't even started shooting it yet. Jeez. Yeah. How many movies is Marvel going to do before Fuck DC even know. puts out one? Before they put out sh- pretty Aquaman. much two a year for the next five years, I think. So they'll and probably that's just do what's on the schedule. So there could be more. At least, yeah. Well, plus <clears throat> including like a, um, Age of Ultron. No, no, no. Wait, no. I think there's Infinity War next year. Yeah, DC is shitting the bed right now. What else it should be there? three because Black Panther, Avengers: Infinity War, and I think Ant Man and the Wasp comes out next year too. Suck a dick, DC. Yeah, DC is getting worked December out. December of next year, really? I thought it was earlier than that. Nope, they kept pushing it back. Fuck. Probably because of reshoots. But yeah, uh, this whole Joss Whedon thing, I don't know. There's kind of a blowback, obviously, because of Justice League, but also because I guess he's kind of a creep and all this all this Weinstein shit going on in Hollywood. So people are just assuming he sexually assaulted someone? No, wrote some shit about him. And he's always kind of championed women's rights and shit, but he's obviously kind of a dirtbag, too, based on what she says, if you believe her. I don't know. His wife? The whole thing's a clusterfuck. Ex-wife. Oh. But yeah, apparently... He was saying all these things and then like banging actresses on sets of movies. So uh, we got our first look at a teaser from the upcoming Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. And mm-hmm. it's basically Chris Pratt being all adorable playing with a baby velociraptor. So CGI looks great. I don't know. I'm pretty pumped for this. I'm I, a sucker for Jurassic anything. And seriously. Chris Pratt's the man. So lock it in for a good time. Those movies in the early 90s were just life altering. Hell yeah. I will watch these until the day I die. Unless they go all Transformers on it. I, I don't know. Hopefully not, but you, you, I, you can't know with Chris Pratt doing it. He's always going to have comic relief just organically. I don't know what it would take for me to stop watching Jurassic World movies. Or Chris Pratt. Do the you like seeing ones. them in 3D? I feel like those are movies you have to see in 3D. Some are. Some you need to see in 3D, for sure. When all the Velociraptor raptors are running in the fields <laughs> and shit and like chasing do someone down. Are they just going to keep making up new dinosaurs? Is that how they're going to escalate this? Well, they... They have to get off the island, right? They upgraded from park to world so that was the big upgrade last time but at what point do you just start thinking like maybe this dinosaur shit isn't a good idea Yeah, jurassic Ooh. universe what they do <laughs> with the the last movie they make they like had a hybrid of what three different dinosaurs or yeah, some like shit the, let's combine the most deadly dinosaurs ever it's like a t-rex <laughs> a velociraptor wrong? and some other shit did it have and albert einstein like no, the smartest should've. fucking thing ever yeah it, it like grew knowledge as it went on <laughs> It had, like camo- <laughs> it had, like, camouflage and shit, too, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure those people deserve to get eaten by dinosaurs. Yeah. This is a perfect idea. Let's make a mega dinosaur that can't be stopped unless a T-Rex comes back. Or Chris Hell Pratt. Yeah. All right, we got a first look at the upcoming season four of Black Mirror. So I'm actually super jazzed about this. Yeah, I can't wait. Are you I, caught up on it? Oh, hell yeah. There was only like Have you watched seasons. all of it? Yeah. Really? Have you not watched them? I watched the first episode, got extremely weirded out. And the first stopped. one was by far, I think, the weirdest episode. I don't know. Easily. I you would, had to like bang a pig or whatever, and then he like did it. I don't know about easily. I mean, it's, that's the weirdest one by far. By far? They're all very weird. Is there anything weirder than a politician having to bang a pig in order to save a girl? What else? What, think of the other ones. Like they were. I mean, they were all. They were like cool, weird. like technologically advanced, which was pretty cool. That's. That one didn't have anything to do with technology. Basically, it was just about like... This well, kind of it was supposed to be like uh, everybody will tune into this for the people. They're because they're yeah. glued to TVs. Yeah, yeah it, true, true. It was so fucked up that it was one of those shows that after I watched <clears throat> it, I went to bed and just prayed that 
there was that no would way never it, happen. It, well, I was praying that it wasn't going to like make its way into my dreams. <laughs> I would have, I would have flipped my shit if I, there was like some scenario in my dreams that was along those lines of the first episode. Mark, there is a a woman in an <laughs> Afghan camp, and you need to bang this pig, or else she is going to get beheaded. All right, Mark's always dreaming about banging a pig. Fuck it's fine. That. It's so <laughs> fucked up. Oh my god. All right. Uh, we also got our first teaser for The Incredibles too. I've been waiting for this movie for a decade, <laughs> and it doesn't show you anything, but that's okay. I'm fine with it because you get Jack Jack coming back. You don't need trailers are dumb unless it's for a movie that you is brand new. Exactly. And I, I agree dumb. with you. Like, I don't need to see a Star Wars trailer because I'm going to go see it anyway. Just see. Just put a picture up. The Last Jedi. There, here's the date. You have everybody coming anyway. Peace. I don't know. I can't do that, though, because when I, anytime like a Marvel trailer comes out, I have to watch it Cause just because I want it very yeah. badly. Yeah. You're a sucker. How long has it been since the first Incredibles? Like eight years? Oh, no. It's been over a decade, I think. It's been a while. Uh, let me let me look it up real quick. Because I was thinking, is it acceptable for three grown men to walk into this movie without having a child? <laughs> I don't know if it's acceptable, but I'll be doing it. Deal with that reality, world. 2004. 13 yeah. years. Then it's acceptable because we were... Oh, fucking... I was still in high school. I was 14. Yeah. We were young. We enough. were 13. Yeah. Damn. Actually, those kids watching Incredibles 2 don't know shit. Bunch of idiots. Seriously. They're fucking wonder, posers. That's an all-around very good great. movie. Uh, I don't have any other news for this week, so I guess we'll move on to The Punisher. Ooh. Hell yeah. Let out your guttural fucking moan. His finger has a really fucking motherfucking ache of fucking your face. All right. <laughs> that was him the whole movie. Your face, your face. I'm going to take your face. You're going to pray. You don't even hear a fuck your face. All right. I get it, Mark. It worked. It worked. It's working now. I'm Stop like, bumping your fucking microphone. No, that's me bashing your face and your fucking face. Anyways, the I got Punisher. the fuck out of you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's at 61% on Rotten Tomatoes. But? But 94% from audiences. Because the people know. Because exactly. fucking Marvel nerds, dude. I mean, this is basically the same score that Justice League got. You know, it was lower from the critics, but it was still like 90% from fans. And I don't give a shit about critics because I don't usually agree with them. Critics are dumb. We're dumb. The other (laughs) thing about this is, you know, when we talk to Jimmy, Netflix keeps all their numbers and viewership and budgets pretty close to the vest. So we have no idea how this is doing. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was incredible. I, I am one who has been avidly against all Netflix series that have to do with Marvel. Um, I saw Daredevil was like good, but it didn't like grab me in. I think The Punisher is the first real Marvel movie slash series that Netflix has actually like gotten my attention and has warranted me watching a whole series. So kudos what to is the it Punisher. about this one that makes it better than the others? Is it just the unmitigated violence and gore or that? And the I think Frank Castle's story is just like much more appealing to me. It just seemed very well grounded. They had a good. They had a great cast. It, hooked, it grabs you in immediately and then lets you like it's, a, it's just a it's a good series. So you're like me. You love a good revenge story. Of course. All about revenge. I'm so far about it. I love that shit. Nothing better than that. Actually, That's, I think the most redeeming thing about the Thomas Jane Punisher movie is that he was just hell bent to murder everybody that killed his family. That's the Punisher. Weird. I That's love the Punisher. That movie, and I do not care that everybody else hates it. I think it's just that the fact that when you're a child, you don't have access or it's. I don't know, like my mom would never, never let me get mature games. So when I got Metal Gear Solid, I was pumped up. When she used to bring me to go buy comics, I would want to just weasel my way into like the spawn section. And the Punisher was one of those where I was curious and I wanted to read stuff like that because I was reading Spider-Man and I knew the whole, all the stories. I knew all the characters, but these storylines with all the revenge, that's obviously why I was into Batman more on the vengeance side. But the revenge stories really caught me. And the fact that John Bernthal was the main character, he was the Punisher in this series. I love him. I loved him as Shane in The Walking Dead, even though his character was a piece of shit. Yeah, but still, I could defend Shane. Same. You could. I could defend it. Yeah. You're definitely fucking with his head. Just the the series of events that took place in The Walking Dead, you can yeah. defend him. Yeah. 100%. But Bernthal was amazing in this. Yes. He, he's got the craziest eyes and that voice is perfect. This is the perfect casting for The Punisher. I agree wholeheartedly. They casted well throughout the entire series, I felt, except for Madani. I didn't like her so that much. So she's played by a woman named Amber Rose Riva. I don't think it was necessarily the casting that was bad as much as it was just her storyline I didn't give a shit about. 
Yeah, just as the actress went on, I just didn't, it wasn't believable. She, everybody else was casted so well, she just seemed a little odd. But like, like the villains in this were fantastic. I thought Lewis, right? The war vet. Yep. He, he was, was he was very good. He plays a good unhinged character. I think even Microchip, uh, a guy named Eben Moss Backrack, he played David Lieberman. He was like the comic relief. He was good. They, had, know, a, he, they had a good uh, They had a good rapport, a good back and forth because they're so opposite. Exactly. They play off each other very well. We've also got Ben Barnes who plays Billy Russo. We'll get into more on him later. Deborah Ann Wall returns as Karen Page. She's the reporter that you'll recognize from all the Daredevil series. And Paul Schultz as Rollins, who is, I guess, the overarching villain, mm-hmm. kind of pulling the strings. He was a real, I thought he was really good. He's pretty intense. Very. And I think, like, his whole backstory and his whole, like, face issue, he looks like a good villain. What bothered you more, his eye issue or the fact the that his, his nose was... Definitely Hooked. broken a handful of times. I Did you notice like how crooked his nose was? Scarring on his eye that that freaked me out. His nose was so crooked. They they rarely you'll notice they'll rarely do shots of him straight on, but there was a few, and his nose is forty degrees to the left. Now I probably won't be able to unsee it though. Yeah, I didn't notice it either. But that's what I'm. He's like a, a weathered war vet. I For felt. real. So I'll ask this: the one thing that turns me off of these Marvel series is. The characters for me are kind of unforget are kind of forgettable. I know Charlie Cox is people love him as the Daredevil. Did you like these characters more in this series than you did? I'm going to say Daredevil because I could see, compares. yeah, I could see how people would love the characters in Luke Cage, Iron Fist. I would hope not. They were fucking terrible. But what did you think about the characters in The Punisher compared to the characters in Daredevil or any other Marvel series you've seen so far on Netflix? So outside of Burnthal. And it's really hard if you're John Bernthal because you're not supposed to be likable. You're supposed to be a gruff asshole. And I ended up just really liking him. I liked <laughs> him too, but that's sucks. because he was a he was that asshole. But like, he's also a murderer. He is a murderer. Yeah. hundred percent. I don't know. Really I, but I, a thousand percent. I, I think Charlie Cox, you can side with because he has better morals. But when you go back to Daredevil season two, when they initially reveal the Punisher, the, the back and forth between Charlie Cox and Bernthal is you can tell that they're arguing about the way that they do things. Punisher doesn't doesn't give a shit about Daredevil because he doesn't he doesn't take it far enough. Daredevil says Punisher takes it too far. Obviously. <laughs> Stop gouging people's eyes God out. Damn it, Punisher. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The the side characters in this are much more relatable and memorable than in any other series. I agree. I will give you that. I like when they introduced Electra, I didn't really give a shit about her character. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And Brick, you mentioned earlier you didn't even see season two of Daredevil. No. So you had zero introduction. You you jumped right into this without having any exposure to it. Yeah. And then I watched like the Same. first couple episodes of Iron Fist and Defenders. Could not get into any of the Marvel it was shows. Bad. It was bad. And this one grabs you in, hooks you in within the first 10 minutes. And you're like, damn, the Punisher is a badass. I want to watch all of this. Mark, as our resident gore aficionado. Where Excellent does this rank title. for you? On the scale of like one to a billion severed limbs, did it satiate your blood? Yeah, lust? I would say it's like nine. I would give it a 10 for the last three episodes. It was fucking brutal. Was I was brutal. like the last three. Woo! When you have me surprised at how much you're getting into the torture and the gore, I understand it's a Netflix series and you have the ability to see shit like this coming from Netflix, but I wasn't ready for it. I don't know. I I didn't expect it because the Marvel series I've watched on Netflix so far, first season of Daredevil, I started second season, haven't finished it yet. Um, I watched a little bit of Luke Cage. I've watched Iron Fist. You can't even put it on the same scale. Daredevil has a couple of scenes that are brutal. Yeah. But other than that, not at all. Not even close to what they have good like action sequences, but it just seemed there wasn't any gore, especially compared to the Punisher. Like, well, the when, Fisk backstory when, was very gory. When I Wilson remember. Fisk bashes that dude's like literally explodes that guy's head with a car door, that's pretty vicious. Yeah. But Oh, uh, I do remember that. That was actually okay. Yeah, yeah, that was that was brutal. But yeah, it's this is far and away the most gory. It gets created. I watched it with Erica and she was covering her eyes a few times, and I'm like Go. Oh my god. Kelly started watching it and I was binge watching it. So she was like on the second episode and I'm like, go in the living room. I'm going in the bedroom with my headphones on. I'm going to watch, finish it up. 
But she's once she gets to like the last three episodes, I'm gonna sit there and watch it and just stare at her from the corner of my eye. How good is doing that? <laughs> to see her that. facial re- facial reactions. I did that with the the Bakuns of Alley when we uh, watched Game of Thrones. It was the Red Wedding episode. I was just like this, really like looking at him the whole time, <laughs> yeah. just like oh, everyone's gonna get murdered. Uh, I love having that little leg up on people knowing or when, what's going to happen when you like know what's going to happen and somebody like tries putting the blanket over their head or just covering their eyes you're like it's done it's done and then they take their hands down and just <laughs> <laughs> somebody gets their eyes gouged yep. out yeah okay. all right break break give me your rating out of 10 yeah well i believe i gave like a stranger things like a 9.5 or something like that because it was super good so on that scale i'm going to keep it with a netflix kind of scale i'm going to give it an 8.5 uh, it had a little, it had some holes and it wasn't like super engaging the entire time. It was really good and definitely worth watching. 8.5. Mark. Limbs severed. I'm going to go off of a Marvel Netflix series scale. From what I've seen so far. We have no consistency to any of our ratings. <laughs> Zero but zones. I think that's the most fair way you can do it. Yeah, because we fast and If I'm going to throw Stranger Things in there, I'm giving this one a seven and a half. Okay. If I'm doing this on a Marvel scale for Netflix, I'm giving it a nine. This is my favorite Marvel series. I would give so far. I would give first season of Daredevil probably a seven and a half, eight. Like I said, I thought the characters were a bit forgettable in that series, and I really didn't care for them. The storyline was awesome in Daredevil, but other than that, I love the characters. I love the the revenge storyline of the Punisher in general. I thought John Bernthal did a great job. So I'm going to give this one a nine on a Marvel scale. Yeah, this is this is an eight and a half for me. I, I think it's excellent. It's definitely worth a watch. The main counterpoint against most of the Netflix series the Marvel Netflix series is that they're too long there's lulls in them and you don't care about yeah. there's always subplots and usually you don't give a shit about those subplots and we'll talk this about, one was good yeah we'll Agreed. talk about the subplot in this this <clears throat> series and I love the subplot I thought it was great I thought and it was it, awesome it made, also, it made sense too and it really Danger. helped to flesh out the Punisher yes. and his story yes let's talk a little bit more about it before we spoil it the undertones for this and the overarching plots that I guess drive these characters you know we got ptsd issues which are huge in this a big part of not only the subplot with lewis but also frank castle you know he's seeing the things that he did the horrible things and he's picturing himself murdering his wife and it almost got to batman levels of i get it your wife's dead you don't have to show me every movie every every episode that your wife got shot yeah, yeah i liked how it built though on every single dream sequence he had it just seemed like it built a little bit more into their a daily life of them so I thought it did a good job of building that character. But, I mean, Curtis, the group leader for the veterans, has the worst luck of, of anyone ever. Got his leg blown off, gets shot a couple times. Gets the shit beat out of him with his own leg. Yeah. I kind of spoiled that, but all right. That was kind of brutal. But I don't know. The, the whole PTSD thing, they did not shy away from it at all. And even the domestic terrorism that happens later on in the show, that's heavy shit. And they did not, they leaned right into it. Even just the fact that when they were having the veterans therapy sessions or whatever you want to call them, it just kind of showed how all these veterans felt in some sense betrayed by their own country because they weren't getting the help that they needed when they came back. Mm -hmm. And what they they don't have the skills that were, they're like matchable in like today's civilized society. Their, Their whole goal and their own mission that they were trained for is to kill people. And now they come home and they don't know how to like, to excel and be a real person in society yeah stuff like that did you feel like this slowed down at all when they ventured away from the main storyline not really because we we were given a good uh background into frank castle and what he went through during war and during his missions that he was put through so and it i think he needed this subplot in some sense it showed that he is not the only one who's like torn up by going over war and like having these these major issues Every, there's multiple people that are dealing with this ptsd and different ways of dealing with it and frankly it, it tied in with all the characters too yeah every single character was tied into the subplot russo was tied in um Madani Madani was, was tied in veteran yeah everyone was so uh what about the villains do you think that they were imposing enough i think there was tiers of villains that they did a good job where they overlapped but also they separated enough to show like the differences between the villains as in like lewis was a minor character but there was different levels of, of villains they and they were classified and cleared differently i'm actually rambling at this point it doesn't make sense at all so yes the villains were good Got yes it. Yeah, villains were dope do you think they should have been shorter the best part of it all was the last three or four episodes that the was last like four episodes hooked. were absolutely addicting you gotta know what happens next i, I loved it yeah i think the side 
plot building for the couple episodes prior to that helped make those episodes pop. Right. So before we get into spoilers on this, absolutely, we all recommend it. Go watch it. Now, from here on out, we're going to talk about some of the plot. So spoilers from here on out. So the side characters. Micro's story, for me at first, it was really hard to get into and care about him at all. And then as you see Frank spend more time with his wife and his kids, you kind of feel for him as he's watching all of this unfold on TV in front of him. First of all, it's super creepy that he's got cameras all over his house. When did he go do that? I was thinking the same thing. Literally has to be just one day where he knows that they're all out of the house. And he just breaks in. Yeah, super weird. And the whole thing where he's dead, but his family thinks he's dead, but he's alive. And then they see him, and then they think they see him die again. What a cruel thing to do. Those kids are going to be so fucked up. So scarred for (laughs) life. They don't stand a chance. Do Micro's kids come out as supervillains in the comics? They have to be. (laughs) In the comics, he actually only has a son. What about... Okay, Lewis Wilson. This storyline blew me away. I completely wasn't expecting it. I thought, okay, sure, you know, he's going to go do something fucked up, but I didn't see him turning into a terrorist. Agreed. Lewis tries to compare himself to what Frank does, and Frank obviously doesn't want to be grouped in with him, and the conflict that happens there is excellent. The difference maker between the Punisher and Lewis was like, that he's not using bombs and like running away and scared. He's, well, that, that and he's killing people that he well he deems that they deserve it. So I don't know. Technically, yeah. Frank did use bombs at one point. I know that's show, what made me a little. So. It made me a little more upset that he said that and then he used bombs like in the next episode later. But, but he did still kill those guys face to face. He didn't. He needed to. There was like the biggest onslaught and of people. Actually, to Lewis's defense, uh, Lewis actually presented the bombs. You were aware that the bombs were in play with the the, the scene with Frank. Those soldiers had no idea there was bombs surrounding them. Yeah, so. but he did bomb like an ATF building. <laughs> yeah. Oh, true, true. I you did really that. feel for him though, and when, like when they mentioned his father and the scenes with his father, where he's trying to get him to you know, try to adjust to being back in the real world, you really feel for that. And kind of unfortunate that you don't see his father later on. They don't really even mention that. Or the backlash of like what Frank was kind of saying is like your dad's going to get terrorists written on his garage. Yeah, because yeah, of that you. Was, his death scene. Also, Lewis's death scene was like, Jesus. You said that and I got chills just like thinking about it. And that ugh. Frank is telling him, fucking kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, yes, Frank, don't try and talk him out of this. This motherfucker needs to die. Light it up. Really intense. Very well done. Very well shot. Uh, I was very concerned that they were going to pin Frank for those murders that he committed. Same. Like the bombings and stuff. But yeah. that would have been more fitting in line with the Punisher story. I like that fugitive aspect to it. Like the man with... The man with one arm shot his wife or whatever. I love the fugitive. Fugitive is fantastic. And that's why I like oh, the like Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. But there was actually a, there was a TV show called The Fugitive. Like that was in like the 1940s. It was black and white. But there was like a long standing series where he goes around and is a fugitive. And the cops are always after him. And he gets all these people to like help him out. I love The Fugitive. And that's why I liked this this show too. Because it had that fugitive ask part of, behind it where he's like. Taking the law into his own hands. Where only like a few fighting. people know what his priorities True identity. are. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that. I thought that was very interesting. Like the dynamic there. Part of the problem I had with this show early on was that he wasn't acting like the Punisher. He was only doing his own stuff. Wasn't worrying about anybody else. The Punisher kills bad guys. Not just the people that wronged him. So that's why when I mentioned earlier that this whole Lewis subplot. I mean it's beneficial to the Punisher storyline. Because that's what he does. He kills bad guys yes that his whole persona is just what, murdering bad people what about the the bikers that he ran over in the opening scene of the show were those just bad guys or were those guys that he think had something to do with his, the murdering of his family so i'm pretty sure that those were just bad guys okay but if you think back to season two of daredevil that's the biker gang that's prevalent in marvel comics i'm blanking on what the name of it is but they they show up a lot <clears throat> they were in season two of daredevil Foggy Nelson goes and like makes a deal with them to try and get some information. But anyways, I'm pretty sure that was just him kind of finishing off some unfinished business. They did very well. Three, three or four times in the show, you see this like looking through the scope and then someone getting shot in the face or trying to, even when they tried to shoot Rollins in the face, that was excellently used. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Rollins shot when that that ended up. And he didn't even flinch. That was badass as fuck. That was was really good. I did not expect that at all. Also, I didn't like the fallouts of that afterwards. Just like nobody came after him. That's what I don't like about 
the way this ends, they just like you're free to go. You murdered forty people. So many. Way more than that. Now that was the other funny thing when <laughs> Micro was talking to him. He's like, "They say you murdered the thirty-seven people. Is that right?" He's like, "That they, that they know, know about." Yeah, good point. <laughs> that they know about. <laughs> he throws a goddamn around better than anybody I've ever seen. Like when Madani's asking if if he killed Wolf, he's like, "You're goddamn right." <laughs> it's so he does perfect. Apologize. For goddamn, yeah, I agree with that. When Micro's just like, "Call me a piece of shit." <laughs> Talking about his moose cock. Oh yeah. Weirdo. Oh yeah, that's what I would that's what I would have got. If I was micro and I had to get Punisher a gift, it would be like a statue of a moose, just so he remembers how big my dick is. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he see him naked though? Didn't he have him tied up naked in the beginning? Yeah. So wouldn't Frank have seen his dick? I don't know. Maybe he was super Whatever. scared, so it was Maybe he was in his underwear, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe there's a chill in the room. <laughs> Madani was over really it. hard to give a shit about. Super She's over it. very unlikable. And the, I think the most relatable she ever was was when her partner got murdered. And he was also comic relief side to Micro. I didn't think they were going to kill him. I didn't think so either. And I, I was I was surprised by it. And I was also surprised that it was Billy Russo that did it. Yeah. And he unmasked him. But damn, I did not like Madani. I just, like I said earlier, I just didn't like her as the, the cop. The scenes with her mom are by far the worst parts of this. Yeah. They're not even needed. Her and her super deep voice, the only person with a deeper voice than John Bernthal. Yeah, you know what they could have done? They could have made this two episodes shorter without having any Madonna scenes in it at all. <laughs> at all? At so all. So the cops just aren't after Frank Castle? No, just have him be government officials or after him, whatever. Just have him, it doesn't matter. She was dumb. I didn't like her. You didn't like the scene, the super fucked up scene with Russo who's consoling her in the bathtub after he just murdered that her. That was dark. <laughs> yeah, that was fucked up. That was like the only good part of her was when her partner got murdered. That was when we only... And they do need to kill somebody. Otherwise, True. it just doesn't feel like there are any stakes. Yeah, because God forbid Madani doesn't have a shot. She can't kill anyone. So let's talk Billy Russo. For anyone familiar with the comic books, Billy Russo is Jigsaw. And in the comics, he was a mafia hitman who was sent to kill Frank Castle. He's like a pretty boy like he is in this show. Except instead of killing Frank Castle, the Punisher bashes his face through a window and fucks his skin all up and they have to sew it back together. So that's when you see him in that stupid face wrap at the end. That's why I was really wondering throughout the, the, the entire season, like, are they going to, are they they going to fuck his face up? Yeah. I said it to Erica while we were watching it. And then they finally get to it in the last episode and like the last quarter of it. And he's just grinding his face up and down a broken mirror, just viciously brutal. Just amazing. I like the message that was sent though. The Punisher was basically telling him, because of what you knew about the murder of my family, now you will always remember me every time you look in the mirror because his face would just be fucked. What did you think about the final showdown with him and Russo? I, I thought they could have done better with it. I mean, I know they were doing a throwback to uh, or a callback for like where Frank's children got murdered and stuff like that. But I just felt they could have done. They could have done a lot sure. more. And they kind of give him that flashback every now and then but they didn't do it enough what happened at the land. merry-go-round i didn't understand that's the whole where flashback. his kids got murdered his kids, got murdered there. His oh, kids, his kids his were murdered covered. why is he seeing his wife getting murdered in his bedroom that's the, the he's just imagining that. that's the dream and that also, is super confusing you well you see the guy that quote-unquote murders in his dreams murders his wife and he takes the mask off and it's frank i know but i thought that was him just imagining it but no the situation was still in the crossfire at, at a uh, like a mob shootout and they were it was planted like they were supposed to be there because they wanted to kill the entire family. Season two of Daredevil talks about how and why it happened. Did you get that brick? Well, I, in the beginning, did you think his wife was murdered in that bedroom? I thought with all it was the first time, but then they have another extended scene where they do the same thing and it goes on a little bit longer. And then they do it again and it goes on even longer. So I just was like, oh, maybe they didn't get killed there. Maybe it's just a dream. So I kind of had. I know I kind of missed that. Obviously. So that's the significance of the merry-go-round. Okay. And uh, Russo does mention that. It's like where it all happened, where yeah. it all started. But yeah, I guess, I guess I can see how you would have missed that if you didn't yeah. watch season two of Daredevil. Uh, yeah, Daredevil. But I also, at first, I thought that was how his wife got murdered, which would have been brutal. Oh, yeah, now we have all the time in the world. Bonk, dead. I love that he killed Rollins. I don't think he did it in the most satisfying way. It was vicious and gruesome, but I don't know. I feel like he could have dragged it out. I feel like Frank Castle... Dude. If you had more time in the show, would have tortured that guy to death. Dude, I don't think I was. Okay, so at first he, what, he stabs him like 30 times in the chest. He stabbed him a lot. And then he like, right when you think he's about to be done, and then he gorilla pounds his face in. 
He cut his throat, and then he starts punching him in the face. And then after <laughs> that, after that, I thought he was going to be done, and then he eye gouges him to death. <laughs> How do you, what do you mean he couldn't have done it? He could have done it more. And the fact that when he was sitting there in front of the computer and turned around and stabbed him, what was that, with a piece of, piece of glass or whatever? It was a knife a, that he had. Was hidden, it a yeah. knife? Okay. Yeah. When he stabbed him with the knife, he stabbed him right in the heart. I thought he killed him there. No, he stabbed him in the shoulder. And then he, oh, he did. And then yeah. I thought he oh. Mike, he Mike Tyson him with his ear. I thought that. Yeah, that was that fucked was up too. fucked up. I really wanted him to show a little more skin flesh off of that. Oof. But you also take have to t- take into consideration that. The only reason why he was e- Frank was even able to move and had that pent up energy is because he was shot up with adrenaline, adrenaline. which was a really so, cool scene, actually. So yeah, yeah, he busted out of those uh, ziplocks or whatever. Yeah, zip ties. And Rollins wants him to be awake, wants him to feel all of it, and that's what his downfall is. Yeah, overzealous. Well, it's, I mean, it's because Billy cut the zip ties, but that reminded me of Law Abiding Citizen. That's a gruesome movie as well. Yeah, Wasn't Billy cut gave- the zip ties. You, you didn't, I didn't see that catch part? that, no. You, if you turned away for like a second, you probably didn't see it. But there's a part where Billy's threatening to kill Frank Castle because he doesn't want Rollins to torture him anymore. Yeah, he promised him. He gets some uh, wire cutters and like puts a little bit of a, a cut in it. And he, just enough for Frank to rip out of it. Wow. Which also reminds me, the scene where Lewis is threatening to blow up Karen Page... Frank Castle's like communicating to her. Yeah, incredible. Him. It was so was good, awesome. so well done. I had to go back and watch that again because I was like, "Wow, he that really, was re- that was great." You know what's in your bag? Yeah, like the way he talked him down was incredible. And getting her to pull the right wire out, yeah, it was very well done. Oh my god, yeah, I forgot about that too. That was crazy. I think Lewis did a really good job, or the actor did, when he pulled the trigger to explode the bomb and nothing happened and he was like so like stunned that it, he's still alive and just like kind of in pure shock and frank mentions you know you're more of a creature i have it than I, anyone i've ever seen yeah it's like i said very well done I well, gush over that scene more, yeah that scene had some some feels to it what wow. about some not well done scenes i think the one that comes to mind is when russo is escaping or he's basically hiding out after all the shit just went down it's like in the second to last episode and he's in his apartment and he hears the the agents coming rolling up on him because one of their radios goes off. Yeah. How stupid do you have to be trying to sneakily come up and surprise someone and make an arrest, but your your radio goes off right as you're about to walk into his apartment. Pretty fucking stupid. Hey Bill, I found some donuts. You're gonna be happy when you get back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, all right, I think it might have been even stupider that he was walking away. He had his Joker scene, the blowing up the hospital where he blows up the entire body. That was the that was cheesiest. That was super Just cheesy. unnecessary. I think there were multiple times where Frank talked down someone that was about to shoot him. One of the, uh, what are the anvil? or So uh, the first one was when he's breaking in to get Wolf. Yep. And it's like a really young soldier and he's walking out of the tunnel. He's about to get away. And yep. He says, I'm going to walk away. You do what you got to do. He did it to Madani too. Yes. Yeah, he check out that gun, happened like the next episode. Yeah, he check like he check off gun. Later. He check off gun that I really hope I don't run into any any soldiers trying to just do their job. <laughs> That's Punisher's mantra, though. He doesn't kill people that don't deserve it. Agreed. No, it makes sense. And they just supposed not supposed to. But I liked. Let's jump back to like the first episode. I like the fact the scene where um, he knew there was no bullets left in the gun, but was still going along with the whole with the whole charade. I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, you, that's, the pro, that's the thing dude. about 13 episodes in these seasons. You forget about, like, the first three episodes. It's good, though, because you can look back on it now and say, oh, fuck, that was good. Yeah, yeah everything was But they that is one thing that this, this show did very well, is they didn't give him unlimited clips. He didn't have unlimited bullets. Yeah. Get that shit out of my face. I mean, he took plenty of bullets. That's another thing. He was There were parts where you were getting fed up because he was just avoiding every bullet there was shot at him. I feel like yeah. he was getting hit with a majority of He was also bullets. Wolverine heels. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. When they're just stapling his head. I'm oh interested God. to see what next season's going to do. Because he needs to be a fugitive. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody knows he's alive now. So he, he obviously he's going to go back to murdering people. He's going to go kill some bad guys. And Who's going to ask for his help? Give me a comic book reference. Who's going to ask for his help to get him, to get him back into the murdering? Uh, that's a good question because the rest of the defenders really don't kill people. I wonder if he's going to try and join the defenders and they do a second season of that, but he'll probably show up in daredevil season three. Do you think they'll want him to join the defenders or will, cause I don't think he's, he's not the kind of guy seeking. that's going to, yeah. Hey, you guys, you know, you guys need a fifth. <laughs> no, Yeah, he's not the kind of guy that would join for that. So that's a good question. But I do think that 
part of what makes the Punisher the Punisher is being a fugitive from the law. I hope he beats the shit out of Iron Fist in a scene. That would be awesome. <laughs> Why don't you have any bam. charisma, you <laughs> piece of shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would definitely see that. So this is great. Go check it out. It's obviously streaming on Netflix. Let's get into our recommendations for the week. Rick, you got one for me? Jim and Andy. Also on Netflix, it goes into how crazy uh, Jim Carrey is as an actor. It's it's hilarious. It makes me question, like, was Jesus Christ the first method actor that just, like, took it too far? You know, like, that's... He goes deep with Andy. He's got a very messed up background. And I, a lot of people will say it was when his girlfriend committed suicide a few years ago that he went off the deep end. But I think he's been crazy for a long time. He's a genuine lunatic. But I Holy like shit, it. Though. I like him. I like him a lot. Even, I like him even more. Sentira. I like him even more because of because of it. Mark, because of this movie. Yeah, I recommend that every person in the world this last month just be nice to each other because it's been a really fucked up year if you start to think about everything that's happened. So You're gonna get heavy on me, aren't you? Yeah. Try not to cry out there, people that are listening. But I think ending the year on a positive note and just being helpful, whether it's giving back. Giving in general, Christmas time, I know a lot of people are kind of caught up in buying things for themselves and spoiling themselves, but maybe just turn that around and give back to someone, you know, and That's give them message. the gift. You know? I'm going to disagree with you, and I'm going to tell people out there to be <laughs> selfish. Do whatever the fuck you want. And Damn speaking of that, my worst person alive, let me go off one more time. <laughs> That's very good. Santa thing. Claus. Fuck Santa Claus because when I was 12, my mom told me Santa Claus wasn't real. Fuck that because I believe for that long... And fuck that guy. He went from let's help everybody to fuck you, Santa Claus. Who the <laughs> hell do you think you are? <laughs> that turned around very quickly. All right. Uh, Marvel's Runaways is starting to air on Hulu now. I, I've talked about it a couple times. I've only watched the first episode, but it's pretty interesting. It's a little cheesy, but it's a, it's also more adult than I expected it to be. So that'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Another recommendation. I wrote an article on this, which will be posted probably around the time that this episode goes up, so you can go check it out. I'm going to do a monthly article called Hot and Streamy, basically covering some of the lesser known streaming options for Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, whatever. And this was a docu-series in the same vein as Cops, but it's about the people called stringers that go around and shoot footage for news channels. It's called Shot in the Dark. It's very well done. So and like they sell that footage to the news channels? Is they that do. their job? So it's Nightcrawler. Okay. It is. It's exactly like Nightcrawler. It's like Nightcrawler mixed with cops because hmm. it's real people in L.A. It's really interesting. Oh. It's a quick watch. So check out that article on thechumpcast.com. Cool. Well, that ending ending song has got to be the ending of The Punisher every episode. I know we stopped talking about The Punisher, but when he, the sledgehammer scene, when he's beating the fuck out of those guys and there's like death metal playing in the background, yeah, I was like, was fuck. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and also, even those, the, the, like I said, tiered villains, those fucking little goons in the beginning were just, you wanted to beat the fuck out of them. Yep. That is one instance where you you start to realize that this show, he is going, he's not going to let anyone live. Yeah. He's going to just kill everyone. The last 10 minutes of every episode, I was just And, and like, that's I'm why it was hard for me to like the character. Except because he, does, he lets Billy live. He, he does let Billy live. For now. But, but all the all the Anvil um, soldiers and shit, is that the, the yep. group named Anvil? Mm-hmm. All the, There was a bunch of them that he could have just let live. You know, they're just working for Russo and they're just trying to figure out their purpose in life and just want to get back into fucking military action, that kind of stuff. Kill but no, he's just, he's just going to kill them all. Shoot them all in the back of the head. Okay. Brutal. It's a brutal show, but go check it out. The, Punish, the Punisher with John Bernthal. But I think that's it. We'll wrap it up here. Um, once again, if you're going to buy anything this Christmas season, though, use our website, www.thechumpcast.com slash Amazon. A small portion of whatever you buy, those proceeds will be thrown back to us, which we'll use to um, put towards the show because there are some expenses on our end. But we would Actually, really we'll appreciate it. Mark's cocaine habit. Yes, that too. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Go be selfish. For now, chumps out, motherfuckers. <laughs>